it's 11 o'clock, so um, we'll see if anybody else pops in, but I'll just do a quick little introduction. Um, my name is Evan Tushinsky. I'm kind of a freewheeler kind of person. I don't like to script out too much stuff, but what I figured I would do, I know that uh, effective seminar gives people some takeaways. And so I will give you takeaways in what I'm gonna call the four Ps, even though one of them's an F, it kind of sounds like a PH. So we'll just make that, a, we'll make it the four Ps because that's easy to remember. Iffy. Photos, paragraph, and <laughs> it's technically an F, but we're going to say PH. So we'll just keep those four things in mind as we're kind of talking about what I think are kind of effective ways to communicate to our members, um, and in, in general, communicating with folks in writing. Um, it comes a little bit from my background in journalism, but I found it really works well in various communications with our members. I've been a team captain in my club, so I've had to write out um, emails to my, team, to my teammates. I've been a committee chair in my club, so I've had to write out to fellow committee members. And doing these two different, very different types of newsletters, I've had to find ways that I can really reach people who don't, who get tons of emails and have every reason to not click on my email. So how can I try to reach them in the quickest period of time, the easiest way, and hopefully engage them? And one of the things that Suzanne and I um, reached on together, along with a guy I called Chuck Yeager, not the astronaut, uh, Chuck Yeager, who's our digital um, communications chair, um, is trying to um, get people, and if we can just grab a minute of or two of their time, that's great. And if we can get them to dig deeper and do more, so does that, is that seem, I think that's the introduction and the framework that I had in mind. And I'm going to screen share and show what we do in our club, which by no means necessarily the um, oracular biblical thing that everybody has to do, but it's just an example of what maybe you'll look at it and find some things that you think are great and things that you think need to be improved. And what we're doing at the district, which is We've put out all of three of these, and so we improve them each time, but they're, they're different in structure and different in purpose, and, but there are some key similarities that may help. So with that, the measure here should hopefully come up momentarily, and do people see something on their screen besides my face? Yes. Yes. Suzanne, anybody? Okay, good. Great. Yeah. So this is our... Um, newsletters from a couple weeks ago. I, cho I chose one that has a few different elements in there. And again, we're limited somewhat because of the um, construct of Club Runner, but we try to approximate and get the most that we can get out of there. We want to have we want to have our calendar. We wanted to have what happens um, in the meeting that's coming up. This comes out Monday ahead of Tuesday used to come out on Thursday or Friday, but we decided that, well, that's a long time to let people know about the meeting that's happening. So we do it on, on Monday. We try to have it come out between 9.30 and 10, because we figure Monday morning when people, you know, a lot of people get into the office or start working at nine o'clock, they're inundated with emails. So a strategic time seems to be between 9.30 and 10. A little quick thing about the, the meeting. Now, we have one structure of doing things is almost like what we call in the newspaper business, the paper of record, where you cover what happened. And so that's what we do in our newsletter. We cover what happened. If you didn't go to the meeting, you get a good sense of what happened at the meeting. But we still try to have a lot of photos in there to make it engaging. And we have two columns in, in our newsletter. So we have different information in each column, again, to keep the format, the pH format, if you will, um, you know, as engaging as possible. And it, our formatting also includes bolding of club members. So you can kind of see names pop out at you. So I'll just scroll down ever so quickly and just highlight a few things. Um, again, you'll see features that are probably familiar at your meeting. We, we have teams in our club because we have 175 members. So when there's a team in charge, we have a greeting line, we try to acknowledge them. Trivia, I got instituted a few years ago. Um, 
brought that back. And now it's a, a dynamic feature at our meetings as well. It's not just something that people email in. And we, uh, our prize is you get a raffle ticket, a ticket into our raffle. Um, and we try to do it something from the meeting. Um, used to be that I would do something really more arcane, but we decided to try to reward meeting attendance by doing it as something from our meetings. So, um, and then we have, you know, announcements and events, things that people, if if you went to the meeting and you weren't, you shouldn't necessarily have to take notes, um, got dates of note, you know, something that, you know, things that happened and uh, some photos interspersed in there, that pH. Um, that other column, little help wanted to add, um, we were looking for uh, um, youth exchange family hosts. Now that we have attendance, I didn't want to inundate you all with uh, um, 50 million bulletins. We do list our absences just for people who uh, want to check and make sure they were um, not marked absent when they were there or vice versa. Um, little Paul Harris induction, who won our raffle. We, we, we started a thing called yays as well as the usual fines that people have. And for our program, we just did a very quick summary. There used to be a whole long multi-paragraph um, recap of the whole program, but the idea is here's just who is at the program and what happened at the program. Our notes are taken by a member of the club. It's not incumbent on the bulletin editor to do this every week. The bulletin editor is an editor. Um, so a club member, um, usually from the team that's in charge, takes notes and sends it in um, to make life easier on the editor. So the editor actually gets to enjoy the meeting. And that particular week, we had a social of five clubs in our area. And so we had a little mini photo essay, just a little quick information about what happened at that social. And to balance out the column so it looks good, we have a few little filler ads like the Chico Rotary Cares. We have some members of our club that'll send out cards to people. So those things, if we have to pull them, we can pull them in that right column. So this covers a lot of what happened at the meeting and also gives a little bit of information, ability to communicate some things. So, it, um, and then I, just for a little filler, I like the four-way test. It makes us seem very rotary. Um, I'm going to share another thing and tell me if this does not pop up immediately. If you do not see the district thing, let me know and I'll reshare. Do you see the district newsletter in my email? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes. This has a completely different philosophy. And this um, came up with discussions. It was, um, I'll confess, it was already <laughs> underway with um, Chuck Yeager, not the astronaut, and Suzanne. Um, but the idea district newsletter and newsletter of record. Um, if, if I'm going to, you don't have to out yourself, but just think in your head if you actually read the newsletter before. Um, and if you did, um, did you read the whole thing when it had, um, uh, and again, it's, it's not to fault the previous editors, but it's just to think about, did you read the entire newsletter when it had a full list of briefs? Um, it had full articles on the front page, did it seem daunting to you? And if it didn't, then that's incredible, that's great. But to some people, it can seem daunting to, to have to invest and dig in to, a, to a, a newsletter that's that large. So we decided to go with a concept of a launch page and then have deeper articles that people can click through to access. So we, um, and we also wanted to make this personality based. Um, Suzanne comes out to clubs, Suzanne records videos. Suzanne is a very engaging personality. And so we wanted to capture that. Suzanne writes a column every newsletter, which also Suzanne decided she wanted to have a shorter newsletter every two weeks rather than a long comprehensive newsletter every month. And so we've divided up the newsletter into a district oriented newsletter at the beginning of the month on a Saturday, because Saturday has been determined to be a good day to engage people. And a um, more club oriented newsletter in the middle of the month. So this is the one that came out most recently. It's district oriented. And because as you'll see in the second head down, September is basic education literacy month. She wrote her column related to that. We run the be very beginning of her column to kind of entice people to read. 
And if this is all they read, okay, at least they've gotten something out of it. But if they decide to dig deeper, click the full message, they will get her full column formatted in a way, again, paragraphs is broken up into shorter paragraphs. Um, it's got that bit in the middle that's indented. Um, she broke up a, a later section with a headline, again, trying to make it visually appealing. And some months it's got a picture of her. This month we wanted to highlight Miriam Wong, who she talked about. So again, formatting um, and Hopefully people will be inspired to click through to her, her piece, second piece. Um, this is also her idea to have a movie inspiration of the month. So we try to pick a movie that relates to the theme. And uh, this month she and I talked about it and Dead Poet Society just seemed to fit with education and literacy. Uh, we picked a quote or two out of the movie and a link to the trailer. And then the article will be related to the theme. and because of the theme of Imagine, we try to do something with Imagine. And then again, we have the article that she wrote, which was, uh, but, uh, rather than not tell anybody anything about it, we try to tease something that's interesting. And theoretically, we have her article here that she wrote about Andre. Uh, and Andre Lewis was a fascinating person. She wrote this article that was great. We have a great picture of Andre, some links in there, and there we are. So, um, two very different styles of newsletters. Um, final piece I'll just show you. Um, she was, uh, we, oh, we have the uh, uh, district news and events. Again, just a couple things, not all comprehensive. We just keep a couple things in there for people to click on. And um, finally, she gave me a little column. She decided to let me have a little bit of real estate. So I try to just write about something that's um, not too long, but just something that interests me or that I talk to her about and interests her. Just again, a little personality piece. So anyway, those are a few different ways. Again, trying to keep it, again, the things that I talked to you about, a little bit about, uh, you know, shorter paragraphs that are broken out, a little bit of the formatting, trying to keep it pithy, trying to keep it, you know, light and bright, have some personality in the pieces. And uh, what we see, oh, and photos. Again, have photos in there. I'm just gonna point out the trivia question thing again. Um, uh, again, our club has 175 members. Uh, I'm not saying that just, I just wanted to give context. These cards are the ones that we draw from because anybody who submits to me the correct answer for the week, get the, the, the drawing for the raffle ticket. That's the prize, it, you know, they get a free, shot at the raffle our raffle somebody won this week the raffle was two thousand fifty seven dollars you know you, wow. you draw the ticket and then you draw the card. oh my god anyway, this is so somebody gets a free shot at that raffle every week um these are the different cards from people so i get it it, it gives people an incentive to read the newsletter to see what the trivia question is and answer <laughs> and the, the the answer isn't buried in the newsletter because we, we we previously buried the answer in the newsletter to give more to drive more readership but that didn't really make much of a difference and and we decided we wanted to make sure people attended the meetings but just to give you an idea of how many different people are responding um i'll get 15 20 some week responding from our club of 175 when about 100 people attend our meetings on average so again, I'm getting, you know, just those are just the people that respond. And other times people say, oh, I forgot to respond, but I knew the answer, you know, uh, those kind of things, or I must have been in your spam filter. Anyway, my point is that sometimes if you find ways to drive readership to your newsletter, that can help also. And again, the trivia contest in two of my clubs anyway has been an easy way to do it. Um, so um, anyway, that's just something to think about um, if you think you need to get get people interested. So, so before I go on to other types of communication, I'm going to click back onto, I'm going to stop sharing and click back to the screen so we can all have a nice conversation. Are there any things that people would like to talk about, about their experiences with newsletters in particular, or any questions about that, or we go on to other communications, things that they'd like to see, things they like? Evan, we use um, DACDB to write our newsletters. And, you know, there's definitely pros and cons with DACDB. Uh, it's uh, limited on what I can do. Any advice to spruce that up? 
I'll be honest, I have not played with DAC DB, so I'm not familiar with it. But my okay. question for you is, um, can you do any of the things that we talked about? In DAC DB, can you break up paragraphs more? Yes, and I can add photos. I just can't move them around like you'd have them, you know. What, mm -hmm. what I found, I had, it took me a little while. Uh, uh, Joan, I'll go to you just one right. second. Uh, and uh, I only want to say that I found I was very limited in Club Runner because they had preset modules and things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I can't crop photos in Club Runner. I have to crop them offline and make them fit the space that I want and then put mm -hmm. them in. Mm -hmm. um, so th the Club Runner gives me the choice of a left or a right. And that's it within that space that we have. So um, I've just tried to work within the limitations of, of what I had. And, and that's basically what I do with Jack TV. Yeah. And if all you can do is put them as, as onto the left, then just space it out a little bit more just so that you give them all. And if you underline, like I put in lines, I decided to have only horizontal lines, not vertical lines, um, just to keep it a little bit fresher. Um, that might be something to consider, um, again, just to kind of break up a little bit and add those elements to it. Um, that's something to consider also. We, again, we decided not to do the vertical line because it looked too boxy. Mm -hmm. But when we didn't have any lines, then it was hard to break to tell where the sections broke from each other. So those kind of small format things can really make a difference. Um, th those little blocks. And your suggestion about breaking up the paragraphs makes a big difference. It's so much eye, more eye-friendly, something like that. So thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Kevin, um, yes. so I, I work with DACDB also, and one of the things, one of our limitations, I believe, that I haven't been able to get around is one picture per story. And um, I don't know, the other deck DBers probably, unless they figured out how to get around that. So I try to do as many pictures as possible. And we actually have someone in our club that takes crazy pictures, um, which makes it. So I build the story. I mean, I know I, I take notes at the meeting, but I kind of build the story and one off on those on those pictures and try to make it as semi funny as possible. Um, sometimes it doesn't even have anything to do with rotary almost. It's just totally out there. But um, uh, one thing that uh, maybe you could help us with is if we could get a group of people that are writing the newsletter and we could see the different, like, uh, so I think there's fewer people using Club Runner in the district. I'm not sure from what I've seen, usually that's the case. I think more people are using DACTV. But I'd like to see different newsletters to see. I, I'm sure people have figured things out that, I just started doing it this year and I don't have all the answers. It'd be great to see some other formats. Dale, for me, I, I'm also self-taught. There was about two years ago, I started doing it. And what I have done with my pictures is I'll use maybe four pictures depending because if we have an event and I wanna put a lot of pictures they all have to go vertical. I can't do like nice horizontal or, um, you know, any montage kind of thing. They have to run vertically. And I usually put them in the center, but I'll put for an event, maybe four or five pictures in my story. So do you create four stories, Vera? Or do no, you- No, I'll write a nice paragraph. I'll, I'll write a nice paragraph about the event. Uh huh. And then I'll, add my pictures to go with that story. And if I'm adding more than one picture, which I normally do, they run vertically. Imagine these little Brady bucks that you mm -hmm. see on our screen right now, and they're all running vertically. Okay. I, I guess I'm not sure how to put more than one picture per story, or, or I, I create a separate paragraph, I guess, for each story. Um, yeah, I, I haven't been able to get around that yet. I okay. shared the screen again, only again, Club Runner isn't something that most of you are using, but again, there may be a, a, a workaround within your system just to get, I wanted to give you an idea about how I found a workaround in mine. So um, 
again, these, the, the, I had to figure out how I was going to make photo essays um, for events like this. So I realized that for the configuration that we have, is 335 points wide. That's basically a full column measure that I can get. I can't get these things any wider. And so I, when I wanted to do, I, I asked the photographers to shoot things that I can crop square and to shoot wide horizontals, because that's mostly what I can use in photo essays, have a few that I can have as odd measures, but most of them I need to have in these configurations. These are 160 by 160 squares because that gives me a little space where I can have a gutter in the middle so it's not photos jammed up against each other. Um, and then um, I made this square just a little bit bigger so I can have some pipe next to it. And then I have horizontals. That way I can run a vertical photo essay um, and I've got different shapes that can kind of break it up so it doesn't just all look like a big long gutter thing. Um, that was how I figured out how to be able to do a photo essay. Um, I had tried to do it as a PDF and tried to import a PDF into the file, but it didn't let me do that. Um, the closest I was able to do was to take um, PDFs, bring them to my phone, screenshot them, and then email them back and upload that as a JPEG into the file. So that was a long workaround. But what I'm trying to point out is that there sometimes can be those sort of creative workarounds you can find as you play in the system if you don't have somebody who is a, a an expert or somebody trial and just suggested and like I figured out. So um, you heard from Vera a workaround that she figured out in the system. And as you play around, I'm using Dale just because he raised this. As you play around, Dale, you may find a different workaround. And Joan has found a way that she can use both right-facing and left-facing photos, the way that I have photos indented to the right and to the left in Club Runner. So I just wanted to share that, even though, like I said, I can't give you any specific expertise in DB. It sounds like um, there's some creative um, problem solving that's already being done and others may have ideas. And Wayne is raising his hand, so. Oh, you saw that. Uh, yeah, I've found some things I can do in DACDB that are, that are very different. They don't have to be vertical. I can horizontally create them. But, I, but I'm absolutely confident I still don't know any more than about 20% of what can be done. So I think there are more work workarounds out there. Um, I could, I don't know, if I put a PDF in the uh, chat, because anybody see it, or do you know how this works? Let me see. Um, I don't know if they do attachments in, in Zoom chats. Um, so, um, but it's possible that you could um, send it off to um, Heather and then she may be able to share it with people. Um, so that would be, that would be my suggestion. Um, if you don't mind doing that, Heather's the one who sent out the training link to all of us. Oh, yeah. and she's our district trainer. So that might be the best, the best mechanism. So Let's see what I can do. Um, if you don't mind doing that. Um, so if, are there any other, um, I, I'd like to just make sure that we don't run out of time. Um, so I just wanted to talk quickly about email communication and then we can come back and have a, a holistic conversation and about other things. Um, I just wanted to show quickly how I adapted what we're talking about into emails. So I'm going to quickly, actually, before I do the share, yeah. um, in my club bulletin share, I schedule all the photographers. Um, and so um, I try to send out, again, as pithy of an email as possible to folks. Um, that's fun, but also calls out things to folks. So again, the, the paragraphs and the bolding and the formatting. Um, so you... Um, this one was just ahead of time, just trying to get people to kind of reconfirm and also know what's going on. Um, we had a division chair last year who um, happens to do um, professional photography as part of her um, marketing business. So she was willing to jump into, a, into the fray this year, um, as you can see from the note. So I just wanted to add that in there. And I also, be, once I um, agreed to become district um, bulletin editor. I uh, rallied a new co-editor. And then finally, I need to let people know about the schedule. 
um, because I needed to schedule photographers every week. So I wanted to make sure that I had people tell me that. So this was the easiest way for me to to let everybody know. I send it out through Club Runner. I've set up a little mail group through Club Runner. Presumably that could be done through DACDB also and any other things or group emails. I just quickly did that. So again, hopefully, again, this is just my way of trying to communicate. Um, and I did this again when I was team captain. I would bolt again have the bolds as quick call outs for people in case they just skim the email. Um, they just got used to the habit. If they didn't want to read all of my uh, goofy writing, they could just look for the, the quick polls that had the meeting date or whatever it was. And I'd get a quick RSVP from everybody telling me, yes, I can come to this meeting. No, I can't. So again, trying to just adapt the same thing in, in other communications, I think is, I found is really helpful because I would sometimes get really long drawn out emails from my team captains or other folks. And I'm like, okay, I have to skim, you know, skim and then try to find out where, what's the point? What do I really need to know? And if it came when I was busy, I would put the uh, keep as new. So it would stay in my, inbox, you know, my inbox and then um, sometimes forget about it. It would get buried in the inbox. And then I get the other thing saying, you didn't RSVP to this meeting. Oh yeah. So that's, just my little tip on, um, again, quote unquote, effective written communication. That was the other little proviso in the title. So I figured I had to add something. So um, anybody else have any tips for effective written communications in other media? I like wow. to keep it Definitely short silence. Idea, That's Kevin. Mm -hmm. I, I sometimes forget to do that. And I, I myself don't like to read emails that are longer than one screen link. So, yeah. Um, and I've thought about shortening up the bulletin as well. Um, also, trying to keep it, mm -hmm. you know, just light and short. Well, I see Wayne shared a file, so he figured out. Oh, great. He figured out the way to do that. Fantastic. Thanks, Wayne. Well, let's see if it opens. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm able to open it and I can save it. I'm seeing where it will, I can save it. In the file name, easy to save, okay. All right, it's giving me places to save it, which is great. Saving it on my desktop. And it's downloading, okay. Yeah, so I've, I got it saved, so great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna continue blabbing on here a little bit, just to elaborate on Dale's point. One of the things that's, that's key to think about is often ourselves. Um, and what Suzanne has, has left the meeting and that's fine. Um, but one of the key things that I do with Suzanne um, as, as her quote unquote editor is talk with her. Um, we bounce ideas off of each other. And, and she often has such broad ideas that when she talks to me, it helps focus it. She, she gets the sense of what I'm most interested in. And I told her that she should even talk to her husband about it after she um, comes back from something that she's really energized about, um, talk to him and see what resonates with him and also see what she talks about. Because often we talk about the things that we're most interested in. And we feel the need sometimes in writing to put things in writing that we think are supposed to be writerly. And we miss the fact that, and we leave things out that may be the most interesting thing because we don't think it fits that form. And I, for and the column that I wrote in this particular issue, the one about table hopping, I gave, I was talking to her about three different ideas I had. And when I mentioned to her table hopping, she was like, what's table hopping? What's that? And I told her, well, that's in my club. We have certain people that sit at the table at the same place at the same table every time. And when I was in the paradise club, I just got in the habit of going to different tables every time. And I even, I didn't put this in my column because I tried to keep it short to your point, Dale, um, but um, I there's a table called the Bob table because the there were four guys in the club named Bob and the Bobs all sat at the same table. And I arrived one time at the meeting a half an hour early so I could crash the Bob table. And, uh, and it displaced one of the Bobs and that Bob was sure mad, but it was like, well, he couldn't kick me out of, my t out of the table. So I was I made an honorary Bob. I was Evan Bob for that meeting. So anyway, that was, she thought it was interesting, the table hopper concept. So she said, yeah. And so I said, okay, because you're so interested in that, I think maybe others will. So I'll write my column about that. So again, finding what things are, are interesting to you or that seem to resonate with other people is often what you should put in there. 
And in the newspaper business, our little mantra is um, uh, we try to think of our readers and, and the question that readers might say in their head, even if subconsciously, why am I reading this? And why am I reading this today? <laughs> and I think that can really help too in terms of communication. I personally would like our club newsletter to be even shorter than it is. I managed to get some things nipped and tucked, um, but there are certain things that just others want to keep in there. And it's okay, I'm the editor, I'm not the publisher. The club president is essentially the publisher. Uh, we have a, a female president this year. She's essentially the CEO of our organization. She's the publisher of our newsletter. There are um, other members who would like to have opinion pieces in our club newsletter. Well, our so far three club presidents in a row have shot that idea down, so there aren't any, but you can see our district newsletter, the publisher, AKA the district governor, wants opinions in there, which is why I get a column, she has a column, that's that style. So again, um, it, it depends on who's, who's in charge. Um, again, your clubs may be different. Your clubs may decide that you would like to have that personality driven piece in there. You might want to have it be even shorter. That's a decision that your club will decide and, and empower. But regardless of whether you do that or not, the, the four P's that I talked to you about, anybody can implement. So does that make sense? Evan, I'd, I'd like to just throw out again, um, it, it'd be great to get input from other newsletter writers if there was a group email or something, or I don't know. I don't know how we would do that, but um, yeah, that'd be kind of well, cool. I'll, I'll talk to Suzanne about that and see what we can set up. Um, I'm really not a committee chair, so I, I'm not like empowered to set up groups on the district level per se. But um, you know, Claire, who's our DGE, is listening, so that may be a structure she sets up for next year. And I know that Suzanne isn't so wedded to tradition and format that it may be something that we very well could get set up. So um, I will um, talk to her. She and I talk every other week because, again, of our um, editor rela um, contributor relationship. So. Um, collaborator relationship. I don't know what word to use exactly, but um, anyway, but I think that's something we can get set up. One thing I do is I go look um, through our clubs and a lot of the clubs, um, not all of them, but a lot of the clubs, you can access newsletters um, from their sites. Um, so um, you either do it through a Google search or you just look on the sites and they have them easily archived. So that's been helpful for me to see what people are doing. Um, so that's that's one way about it. But it, again, what, I'm not negating your point at all, Dale. Your point is is outstanding. Um, I'm just you know, explaining how I've been able to do it in the interim. Uh, one thing that um, I'm going to throw out to you for the DACDB folks, uh, Jerry Wilkerson is the district DACDB guy. And he, he can be helpful also if you shoot him an email. I know he's in that... that um, uh, deal that Suzanne put together, um, and uh, he's helped me a little bit with some of the, um, sometimes my photos come out, you know, sideways <laughs> in DACDB, and I didn't know how to control them, and there's a, I, there's a way to do it. So um, he was helpful with that, and I, if, if I can't, if there's something technical, sometimes uh, he he has resources. He knows other people that are detailed with DACDB too, if he doesn't know the answer. So. And also, Dale, just to throw it out there as well, um, there have been occasions that I've had to call DACDB support, and they are so great about walking me through how to fix something in my newsletter. Okay. I hadn't thought of that. That's probably, yeah. They're awesome. Great. They're awesome. Okay. And just so you all know, we do the district newsletter on constant contact. So um, that that was a kind of an account that we inherited. So that's how we do it. So um, that's a, a third option um, for, for doing it. I'm not suggesting that people need to change what they're doing, but just so you know, I, I and I picked that up, um, again, a little there, but I got 
you know, quick little bit of training, but mostly just kind of figured out how it, how it works and what constraints are. So, so Evan, let me, that's how we're sitting. Oh, oh yeah. And then uh, no, I, so Dale say, and then Claire. Gonna, or, uh, oh, okay. Um, so oh, no, I'm, not getting, ahead. I'm not getting the oh, district oh. newsletter. Uh, not sure okay. why, but, um, I don't know if it's because I'm, my email's not being picked up or something, but that was the first time I, I've, I've been getting Suzanne's little, um, uh, what is the, the deal she puts out each mm -hmm. month, I think where she, she talks for a few minutes and, um, you know, that's on DAC DB a link to her YouTube, whatever she's calling it. So I have a, I have a suggestion for that, Dale. So Dale, you use your work email for, um, and your work, because it comes from constant contact, it may yes. be in your spam folder or it may be filtered. So that's one of the things that, one of the challenges we have when we try to send things out like that, when people are using different kinds of emails, um, it'll end up in spam or promotion. You know, like in Google, there's there's your main inbox and then there's promotions and then there's, you know, other things. It could end yep. up in one of those other um, one of those other sections. And especially That's... especially um, having come from a financial services company, if somebody tried to send something like from constant contact to my work email, it was never it was making it through the firewalls. Claire, so that you're, you're absolutely correct because I just got off the phone a couple of weeks ago with our chamber uh, chair guy uh, for the Fairfield Sassoon Chamber of Commerce. I said, I'm not getting your emails. I don't know. You know, I know you're having a lunch here, there, or whatever. I get nothing. And he said, constant contact. And that's yeah. absolutely what it is with Outlook. Yeah. yeah. And so the and the other thing is, is I put Jerry Wilkerson's <clears throat> email in the chat. And just as a promotion for other um, other festival sessions, um, on Tuesday at 7 p.m., there's a session about DACDB. Oh. So if you guys are looking for more, want us to in the future, I don't know how much um, Jerry's going to cover on Tuesday about newsletters. But if you guys want a special session about newsletters in the future, just tell us and we'll get one. Because... It's obvious that some, several of you have the same questions or some of you have solutions for questions that other people have. And that's, you know, that's that kind of collaboration that we want to sponsor. So. And it can be really funny too. I mean, just the driest <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> He's fun to talk to. You have to know, just to make sure that the Sarkat Sometimes you have to see past the sarcasm, yes. but I do love Jerry. He's great. And he'll be continuing <laughs> on DACDB. He'll be continuing on DACDB for 23-24. So I'm very happy yeah. about that. And I was just going to add, if you, if the constant contact issue doesn't solve the problem, you know, if you don't find it screened or, you know, you, you're, um, you find that you are getting other things, you know, like Dale, if you resolve that issue with the chamber, so you now are getting constant contact emails from the chamber, no? Okay. Um, and, and if you um, want to email an alternate email address to Chuck Yeager, not the astronaut, what he's doing every month is updating um, a new um, uh, email list for us to send out to. Because what they found last year is there was one that was uploaded at the beginning of the year. And when we got new members, they weren't being added. Oh. So, um, we, so we're trying to update every month. So um, please feel free to uh, reach out any kind of anybody in the district you know, so reach out to, reach out to Chuck Yeager or yourself, Evan, yeah. and um, right. and add myself. To, so there's a separate. Um, there, somehow there's a, there's a, you, you're you have a separate email list. Yes, that is, that outside of constant contact. Right. Well, it, yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you have one that's like your own personal email that you don't mind this going to, oh. that that isn't an issue. See, that's not going to be blocked by that. If you have, I a, will do that separate Gmail account or something else, yep. just send that just for this purpose, because this Got is it. coming through constant contact, everything else is DACDB that you're getting, then you can make sure you get this. So right. um, that's what we're trying to do. Like I've asked at my club each time, you know, I've, I've waited every few times just to ask if people have been added and, and the percentage of people getting it now is their hands are going up higher because they're checking their spam filter and promotions, the things that Claire is talking about. So we're getting greater and greater. Um, 
we, again, that's anecdotally because it's just my club and uh, people have a vested reason to read it because they love me, but you know, um, still we um, just trying to, uh, to work through or trying to get more engagement um, through the, you know, and have at least have technology not be the barrier. If people don't feel like reading it, that's the, that's another issue, but at least not have it be because they didn't get a chance to see it like you did. So does that make sense for everybody else too? So, well, we're kind of near the end of the prescribed time, If there, unless there's anything else, another issue people would like to discuss. I see the person next to Joan is, is saying something to her. <laughs> I don't know if Joan is the interpreter. <laughs> you're, you're muted, so I don't get to hear anything, so. Okay, it, this is my husband, Fred Kalignan, and he's, he's Hi. here because we couldn't get in on the computer downstairs and go to separate events, but. Okay, great. So my question had been way back when a club runner used to be able to check how many club members opened their email. Is there something comparable in DACDB? The DAC TV people are shaking their heads yes, so that's great. How do I, how do we find that out? Um, Fred, this is Claire. I'd suggest you ask Jerry. He'll be able to show you how to, how to check. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this was less the, this was less the techie and more of the um, content driven uh, session. So um, forgive uh, me. The, um, the writing articles, this has to do with figuring out who in the club actually bothers to look at it. Right. Well, we're doing that, at least in the constant contact thing, we're doing it. And what we found is um, since we changed our format of the district newsletter, we're up 6%. Wow. Um, so at least that's good. Um, our click-throughs are as going from the launch page to the articles. So I did make a change this, and I'm starting to include more of the information. I tried to have it be more of a teaser in the first few, like uh, click here for the details in the hope that more people would click through to find out the date, you know, when we had, um, you know, the, the past my president who passed away, you know, our, our friend who passed away. I figured if people would want to know where that's, that um, celebration of life was, they would click through. Well, when we only had 2% click throughs, I said, well, that's probably not serving people as well. So when we had these district seminars here, the fall, the fall session of learning, I made sure to put, check your email for your link because you ha everybody had their own individualized link, but then I did a click through for the full schedule. Mm -hmm. So that's at least, you know, something that's not depriving people of information. When we had the, um, the Suzanne had sent me at the last minute um, some information about the, um, the, the fire up in the weed area. I made sure to put a link that, that they were having a meeting the very next day, but I had a link to weed rotary so people could click on Weed Rotary to get that information if they wanted to contribute more. Um, again, not trying not to bury things and have to go inside um, as much, but still give people an enticement to click through, but not make that the only place that you had to do. So, Sheila, yeah, hi. hi we finally <laughs> enticed you to click through and say hi to us. I, I have been watching and listening, to, and, and it's been very interesting. Thank you. So my Club Reading West Rotary has a different way to share information, and Suzanne's very familiar with it. And maybe she can talk a little bit about how Reading West Rotary uses video communication to reach out about meetings. So, so how many of you have seen Scott Schaffner? You've seen him as part of the district ads, but... I saw him last year because he will market the meeting every week and he literally does it in 30 seconds or less. It's spectacular. And um, I don't know what else to say, Sheila. He is just a gem. And it was just from seeing what you guys are doing at the club level, how it's like, well, let's tie him into the district videos. About 45 seconds, often he's in his vehicle, might be mm -hmm. not driving, but it, it's, it's fast and it, and it goes out to everyone. So just another way to communicate. And, and he's pushing um, basically in that 45 seconds. See, he's really good because it really seems like 
30. I mean, he's very good. He is pointing out the meeting is in two days. The meeting is at this time. And here is the speaker. And do not mess up. You don't want to miss this. Or if there is an event where you're volunteering and it's it's really, really effective. I have to believe there are more clubs doing that, but I haven't come across them. This is, she, this is Sheila's club you're talking about? Yeah, Rotary West. Ready. 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 Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. 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 One thing we're going to try to do with Club Runner, we've been doing so many more things that are more important operationally with Club Runner that our tech committee hasn't gotten to it, but we're going to try to activate different modules in our newsletter in the hope that they can be shared in other platforms, um, you know, through social media. I'm just going to quickly call up again and then we can... Uh, let people go for uh, lunch if they want to or other things they want to do. But you notice how we have like our speaker, this is actually a module, you can't see it because it's it's seamless. Our calendar is a module, mm -hmm. um, the meeting recap is a module. This ended up being a separate module down here. Um, these other elements are modules. The idea being that um, the, ver the other folks communicate, our social media committee, et cetera, would be able to just take that content and leverage it in different ways. And then the next step could be very well what Sheila's talking about. We right now don't have the easiest capacity of, of um, linking to videos within it, but we could then hopefully make that our next evolution. But right now um, we have, the Club Runner has silos. So I can't eat that calendar. We have like a bridge to the calendar um, but I have to go into the calendar to edit anything. And, oh. and we have speakers in the calendar. I can't even take the blurb on the speaker and the photo from there. I have to, to cut and paste and then download the photo and upload it into the image gallery for which the bulletin has access. So they're just, that's kind of the limitations that we're all talking about within our various platforms. Mm -hmm. But again, we will probably get to that point, but right now they're working on um, a better payment system at the meetings, hopefully a, an idea where our badges, either through an RFID chip or a scanner can be used for attendance. Um, we're trying to find ways that are just operationally smoother. So my activating, um, the, the modules or the bulletin are less of a priority. So <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to share that. That's what Sheila reminded me of. We're trying to slowly but surely get into the 21st century um, mm -hmm. and we'll get there. So, um, so one nice thing about DACDB is you can delete stuff in the final, you know, once you load it all up and you're in the bulletin section, you can play with it. And there's, it's interesting. I, I uh, nothing, I, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here from district wise, but um, we, there's one section in our newsletter that is um, uh, district, uh, what do they call it? District anniversaries. And, uh, you know, I'll run that maybe once a month and let it go, but I don't want that in every newsletter. I have people, you know, it repeats the same thing week after week. It's the anniversaries for that month. And um, there's no way to get rid of that. I haven't figured out how to do it in the programming, <laughs> but um, I have to delete it out every month in the um, in in the DACDB, you know, wh wherever it is. I can delete the rows and it's gone. You so, can blame blame me, Dale. Sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that was set up when it, the model was set up and I have no idea how to edit that either so I haven't yeah I haven't figured out how to edit it out so I just delete it each week you know and, and I'll put it in once like I said once in a while so. Fred is about to chime in I think he's got the idea well no it's a different idea it would be neat to know what percentage of various clubs read the newsletter when we did attended a national workshop, I think it was Club Runner before Deck DB. They said it was on average across the nation, 15%. Our club at that point was averaging 25. I have no idea where the clubs are now getting 35, 10, what have you. What are other clubs' experiences? I check mine periodically. We're running really pretty well. 50 to 60% actually open up the newsletter that I send out every week. Very, you can, can you check that through Deck DB? Yes. Vera, I need your contact information because <laughs> this isn't. You have uh, to remember, your newsletter is sent out as a P-mail. 
So when yeah. you go into Pmail on your left side of your screen, all of that information you can check, but I will definitely put my contact information <laughs> in the chat. And, okay. And, and, and I have two, I heard two questions. One, how do we track? And, um, and then other just general formatting things that I'll shoot a note to Jerry Wilkerson. So he knows that that kind of information is something that people are asking for. So if he doesn't have it in what, in the session that we already talked about for next Tuesday, he'll know that we need to do something to follow up. There's Vera's email. So, um, yeah, those who want to talk to the Oracle, there we go. <laughs> So she's the DAP DB <laughs> newsletter oracle. So I had to learn this so. stuff on my own. <laughs> well, that's okay. You, you, you're a prodigy. So that's even better. So <laughs> and that's kind of what we talked about. That was another thing. You know, there's another P, prodigy. So um, we'll have a fifth P out of this thing. You know, teach yourself and become a prodigy. You know, you'll learn, you learn, you learn by doing practical. And by doing so, anyway, we've got this has been such a dynamic session that we've uh, gone to eleven fifty six. So we're uh, um, well over the allotted time that they want, and uh, I don't want Suzanne to uh, get mad at us. So thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good job, Evan. Good we will. We will. Thanks, everybody. See you.